What you say? No way. And most people would probably, uh, if, if they're like you, humble enough to admit it, probably would say, no, you know, I've lived so many decades and yet I'm not an expert. I'm still trying to figure it out. And I think that's, you know, gee, of all the things that we should be expert in, you should become pretty darn good at life, right? If you've weathered the storms and you've lived several decades, we should be comfortable in our own skin. We should be comfortable with our relationship with God. We should know who we are, where we're going. And yet, really, most people struggle. Most people struggle. Just getting up day to day, thoughts, you know, bombardments come from the devil. And every day, people struggle. So, now here's a great truth in the Bible. Romans chapter 11, verse 22. Many people don't understand this. The Bible says in the English Standard Version, Note then the kindness and the severity of God. Can you please say kindness and severity? Hmm. We like the kindness. I'm sure everyone likes the kindness. Yeah? But it doesn't say note the kindness of God. It says note the kindness and severity of God. Severity towards those who have fallen, but God's kindness to you, provided you continue in His kindness. Otherwise, you too will be cut off. An easier version says this. Notice... How God is both kind and severe. People struggle with that. People tend to go to one side or the other. This is the hard thing about learning this truth. It's more natural for people to say, I believe in the kindness of God and I like the church that talks about the kindness of God. And there are others who are like, no, no, I, I, I believe that God you know, has, has a... Uh, believes in morality and not compromising and, and we shouldn't be like the world. And so they tend more towards the church that might be stricter. Right? But the truth is, God is both kind and severe. He's severe toward those who disobeyed, but kind to you if you continue to trust in His kindness. But if you stop trusting, you also will be cut off. Okay. Pretty uh, kind in terms of what he's lavished upon us through Jesus Christ, and yet pretty severe. Saying cut off is pretty severe, wouldn't you say? If we don't continue to believe in his goodness and walk in that. We all want to partake life, correct? We want fullness of life. We want abundant life. How many of you want that? Yeah, you want meaning in life. You want to live out your purpose on the earth. Yeah, when you die, when the day comes, when you die, you want to go and appear before God and hear Him say, well done, good and faithful servant. Yeah, you, did, you, you, you were put on earth for my purpose. I created you for my pleasure and purpose and you fulfilled it. Boy, wouldn't that be just the best thing to hear for all eternity? It's so satisfying, the fullness of life. Well, how do we get there? Well, this is a great illustration here that shows us the person of Christ at the very foundation of our life, then the power of Christ, then the practice of Christ, we build upon the person, the power and the practice, and finally we would reach the purpose of Christ in our life. The Bible says this in 1 Corinthians 3, No man can lay a foundation other than the one which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. There is no other foundation to our life other than Jesus Christ. What people tend to do is they take things that they're comfortable with or they like and they make that the foundation. Some people like worship. So they say the foundation of their life is worship. Yeah? Um, some people like serving. So they say, you know, serving God is, is the foundation of their life. Others like fellowship. So they come to church, I want a lot of fellowship because that's where I feel warm and fuzzy and accepted and maybe popular. And so that's the foundation. That's what I'm pursuing. That's what I want. You know, fellowship. But all of these are substitutes for the real foundation, which is the person of Jesus Christ. We must build down before we build up. Basic principle of architecture, construction. You see a really big, tall building, very amazed, very uh, just impressed with something like that. You've gone to KL, you see the Petronas Towers, especially at night. Beautiful, beautiful towers, amazing. But you know, for them to build it up so high, they had to first build down so low. They had to put those pillars deep, deep, deep into the foundation. And they had to lay lots of steel and concrete, which you probably never get to see, unless you were there when it was building. Otherwise, you just don't get to see that. You only see the, the thing that goes up. And you think, wow, that's so impressive. But we must first build down 
before we build up. Our right doctrines, fellowship, acts of service are part of the building. Do you know that? They're part of the building. But they're not the foundation. They're not our foundation at all. Christianity has only one foundation. And that is the person of Jesus Christ. How do you know if you have a solid foundation? How do you know? Well, let's go back to the beginning. The first decision. Let's go back to that. We've done, done this a few times, but worth repeating. I think we could teach this until kingdom come and people still struggle to understand the very first pages of the Bible. What was the first decision about? Because it's a repeat. Our many important decisions in our life is a repeat of this first decision. Here it is. Genesis chapter 2. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree in the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. God did not forbid the tree merely as a test. A lot of people say that. Yes, of course, he gave man free will, and this was a way that they could exercise their free will. Yes, but it wasn't merely a test. God forbade it because he knew its fruit was poison to man. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil is poison to us. Nearly all problems in our lives come from eating the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Whatever counseling needs you have, whatever you're going through, nearly every problem in your life comes from, has its source, in eating the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Let's explore this a little bit further in the next chapter, chapter 3, verses, verses 4, 5, and 6. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows in the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So Satan tempted Eve to grasp what God already wanted to give her, what did God give her? Eternal life, a divine quality of life, a good life apart from her own works. Wouldn't you like a good life that you didn't have to work for? She had everything. Every one of us in this room and listening to this video teaching, every one of us would dream for. We would love that. A good life, no lack, no curse, and apart from our own works. God had already given all that, but Satan's lie is for us to grasp for ourselves through our own efforts to take what God has already provided through his son, Jesus Christ. You know, the whole reason why millions of people are going to go to hell is because they're going to grasp for themselves with their own religious doodads, with their own rule-keeping and rule-mongering. They're going to grasp for themselves a ticket to heaven and they will fail. The goodness of man can never redeem him from the evil that is resident inside. He needs God's solution. God is the one that wants to provide everything that we want. But instead, the devil tempts us and says, God's withholding. God doesn't want to give. How many people have been sick and, and they think, well, the doctor would want to heal me. You know, you don't doubt if you go to the doctor, he, he's a stranger most of the time. He doesn't know you. He hasn't been to your house. He probably doesn't really love you. But you have no doubt when you go to a doctor, he's interested in healing me. And yet Satan makes the ordinary Christian believe that when you're sick, God's not interested in healing you. And there's no comparison. God loves you far more than any doctor you could ever go to. He cares about you and he's provided more solutions, better solutions than any human being can. Amen? Amen. This is the temptation of the devil. He constantly makes us think that we have to grasp and we have to take for ourselves things that God would happily and freely provide through his way. Genesis 3, uh, now verse 6. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her and he ate. So sad. If only she believed God, she would have never lacked a thing. But instead, she believed the devil and she died. She believed the devil and the result was loss. Everything that she had, gone. And the things she, she thought she would get by disobeying God, everything was gone. She died. 
So she was building her life on a wrong foundation. The true foundation, if, if the story could have been rewritten, if any one of us had been in the Garden of Eden, we knew this, we, we might have been able to rewrite the story, maybe we'll get a chance, and, and we would say, no, I'm not going to build my life on the foundation of disobeying God and eating this tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I'm going to make the right choice, I'm going to make the choice that leads to life, I'm going to take from the tree of life. Unfortunately, we've got around 7 billion people uh, alive on earth right now, and so far, everyone has failed the test. Everyone, when presented with these two options, nearly unanimously, well, I must say, actually, unanimously, at some point, will go for the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And this is the problem. This is why it's the source of nearly all of our problems. And it's a struggle for the natural man to understand. So I'm going to try to as they say, unpack this. I'm going to try to reveal this through examples and illustrations. But it is very hard for the ordinary person to understand what these two choices are really about. Which would you choose? Which would you choose? Everyone would probably say, oh, of course, I'd choose the tree of life. Are you sure? Look out your window, baby, they've seen you like care. The band's playing 